everybody, it's Larry, and welcome to today's video. And today we have the sequel to the clustering video that we did a bit over a year ago. Now, if you don't know what this is, uh, we actually did a clustering video, and uh, this is it, clustering with the Ancestry's new DNA matches beta. Now, it came out of beta a long time ago. This was done in May of last year. You can see 60,000 views. Uh, this is the de facto best video in dealing with you know your DNA, your DNA matches. You can see here it's the first of a four-part series, and uh, there's actually four videos in this series. There's links to all of those. Uh, if you want to, you can just search for it. Um, just search how to cluster your DNA matches with Ancestry, or search in my channel just for the word cluster. That'll get you there. Uh, this is the best video, and so. What I'm gonna do here, I mean, this video is already out there. It's no longer in beta, but it, this principle still apply. And, you know, the other videos after it on uh, making the trees and, you know, triangulation, all that still applies. So why the new video? Well, one, I want to, you know, bring it and make it a little bit more current, but I also want to help you because I gave you the ball and pattern and the plus one. I'm gonna start calling that maybe dual and you'll see why in a second. But I want to refresh the whole clustering concept. I want to break it down a little better because a year has passed and people have asked me questions. And so, you know, I know a little bit better on how I should have answered it back then uh, because, you know, that was when I first started the channel. <laughs> so, you know, uh, a lot of things have happened since then. So here we go. We're gonna get into the clustering. So, you know, if you, again, if you haven't seen this video, go to my channel look for cluster um, or you know just search for you know here and look at the videos and find this there's four in this series it's the best four part series of figuring out your family whether you know adopted and trying to find it you had a dna surprise doesn't matter your scenario this series hands down the best that there is out there for that now this we're gonna try and top it <laughs> that's a high bar 60,000 views and growing it's still uh most of the time the number one much most watched video on the channel uh because it is so powerful so many people now with that let's get into the clustering into that video so let's just take that one off so we don't confuse it there we're gonna go to our dna match list and we're gonna cluster it so important things, like I said, that I didn't say in the old video that I'm going to say in this video, you do not want to start with close matches, okay? And the reason is, well, let's just take right here. It says, you know, parent child, this is my daughter. And, you know, you can tell from the name Jones, I'm Jones. And so if I was to say here, add to group and do all the shared matches with me and my daughter, every match that I have through my mother every match that I have through my father will also match to her in the shared match. There's not any genealogical value through going through her. But Larry, what about DNA drop-off? Yes, she may not match to everybody in my DNA list. But what I'm saying is, she is not going to give me value in segmenting out my line. She's not gonna help me identify mom's line, not gonna identify my dad's line, not going to help me identify a grandparent line. Okay, none of those lines are going to be segmented by doing shared matches with her. The same thing with my mother. Now, the only thing I would get here was I'd get who's related to my mom. But I get that if your mother or father take the DNA test, it'll say mother's side or father's side. And I get that question a lot. Larry, how did you get that to show up on there? Because, you know, as I go through here, you know, it shows up mother's side on quite a few. I didn't do anything for that. My mother took a DNA test. It recognizes that it has 34, 71 cinnamorgans, and this is going to be my mother. All right. It knows it's a parent child relationship. And right here, because of the DNA share, it knows it's on my mother's side. It knows this is my mother because I identified. Now, if I had to put a male here, or when she took the test, if she'd identified it was the male or, or whatever, it would have given me a false father's side. But, you know, it's a female, it's my mother. And so by doing that, it says mother's side. So that's how mother's side shows up. I get that question a lot uh, in, over the last year. All right, so uh, this close family, again, and even with first cousins, 
first cousins are going to be first cousins through a pair of grandparents. And those grandparents are going to be on one side, mothers, or the other side, fathers, right? So, you know, they're not going to be the cousins through all four of them, you know, <laughs> it's because then you'd have like your brother and sisters married each other. Not saying it can't happen. I'm sure there's some trees out there that has some strange stuff like that. But that's, again, not going to give you any genealogical value. So you want to deal with the second cousins. Second cousins are the magic group, all right? The third cousins, not so magic, and I'll talk about that right now. When you get beyond the second cousin, you might match them with normally with the Cinemorgans you would expect, or they may not show up in your list. Now, if they don't show up in your list, you don't have to worry about clustering them, right? So it's not a problem. But when you're dealing with matches, what I found was, I've got my mother's DNA test, and she has some second cousins. That makes me second cousin once removed. There are some, uh, one in particular, she matches at 273 centimorgans. I match them at 248. That's really strong, especially for a second cousin once removed. She has others that she matches in the 270s, and I don't match them at all. Zero or below six is probably more accurate, and Ancestry doesn't report it. Now they don't report below eight, but that just kind of tells you the DNA drop-off. Now, DNA Painter, their version three, says second cousin, once removed, goes from zero up. Their version four says it 14 up. I can tell you 100% fact, I've got two in my trees, or in my mother's trees that aren't in my trees, that I'm second cousin once removed, and there's both zeros to me. So it does go down to zero. Not sure why they changed it to 14. I'm sure there was whatever in the data sets that made them change that to 14. But I have two in my data sets that are zeros. Okay. So it does go like it was in their V3 number system from zero on up at second cousin once removed and for third cousins and any kinship beyond that. All right. But if they are zeros, they're not in your DNA match list, so it's not going to cause us a problem. But I want you to understand why second cousins are the sweet spot. And with second cousins, you can use their Cinemorgans, and you will be able, through DNA Painter or the Ball and Pattern method or a combination thereof, if you cluster them and use the Ball and Pattern, you will find out where they belong in your tree. It's going to happen, and we're going to do it here, all right? So the first thing we're going to do is we have to pick somebody in here to, to start off with, and it doesn't matter who it is. So, you know, here's the second cousin, so I'm going to scroll down. I like to pick somebody with lots of people in the tree. So this one has 103. We're going to pick Mr. Okay, it says it's a female picture there. Here it's black. We're just going to say Mr. <laughs> all right, so we pull up the page, and right here we're going to click Add to Group. Now... Create custom group is what pops up, and we're going to click Create Custom Group. See where it says Group Name 1 of 24, because this is the very first one that we're going to do. Now, what I like to do is I like to do a numbering system and do 1, which is the number. It says Group Name 1 of 24, and then Group. And you say, well, Larry, that's not informative. doesn't need to be now. We're not trying to be informative yet. We're trying to identify lineages. All right? So we're going to click Save. It pops it up, lets you know it's in there. Then you have to click out here once twice not sure why twice if you do it again it goes away with one all right that little unique thing about that now right here it says common ancestor because i've got it linked correctly we're going to ignore this okay we don't see this all right we don't see the green around uh, uh, mrca we don't see the green for the, the name all we see is this tree and right now for the purpose of this video this is just noise. It's a lot of great information. We haven't done anything with it. We're not going to do anything with it yet. All right. So the first thing we want to do after we've assigned the group is we're going to click on shared matches. Now, when we click on shared matches, we're going to begin assigning everybody to this group, which again was group one. So when we click on it, notice how it says group one. Very easy to identify where it is. But also notice how this box covers up the next person. So you have to click out here and then click on it. And add a group, click out here, click the next one. Add them, click out, add them, click out. 
I'm not sure why it's been a year, over a year since this has been out and Ancestry hasn't dealt with this because that's a real nuisance and it does double the time required to do this. Now, we're going to use what I like to call a cast a net method. And what I mean by cast a net is we have a choice. In my other videos, I went down to about the 100 Cinemorgan, which is right about where fourth cousins start, and that was the net. So uh, the reason I call it casting a net is imagine a fishing net, and the holes are the size of 100. So when you throw it out, every fish that's smaller than 100 slips through. If we go to 75, and that's the size of the holes is 75, every fish smaller than 75 slips through, and the ones that are larger are caught. If we go down to 50, we catch every fish larger than 50. Or we can drain the entire pond and do all of them. And that means going down to 20. So you can do 100, 75, 50, 20, or any number you pick, and that's fine. But what you do is you scroll down to that number. And we're going to, for the purposes of this video, use 50. In the old video, we used 100, we're gonna use 50 here. And you start with 50, there's 40, there's 50. So we're taking everything 50 and above, click add to group. Now notice here, I just have to click add to group and then the group name. It's so much easier going up. I mean, look how fast we could go if we go down, if we, or if we go up. If we go down, it takes literally twice as long because when you click, it covers over and you have to click out and then back. And this cursor action moving back and forth, added in with the extra click literally doubles the time it takes to flag and cluster all these. So you definitely want to scroll down to whatever the size of the net is that you're casting and then work your way up the list. And if you do that, uh, you can see this did not take very long and we did quite a few people. Okay, we did quite a few people and it didn't take long because we went up. If we were to go down, <laughs> it would take a long time. Now, Ancestry, uh, if anybody from Ancestry is paying attention, what I'd like to do is right here where it says add edit groups when I assign the group, I'd like to have a button either here or to make it easier for you right here that says assign all or reset. Assign all, reset, and assign whatever colors are to this person all the way down. Now, why would the, if you want to do this? You know, just because Larry asked? No. <laughs> all right, so uh, it's gonna save you time and effort. So let's refresh this page because see, they didn't come forward uh, when we click the, the button. So what we're gonna do, we have the option to click and refresh right here or hitting the F5 button. They both do the same thing. We'll click the refresh button there. And it brings in all of the yells that we assign. So why would Ancestry want to, to do that? Well, every one of those that we just clicked, it had to assign it and assigned it on their back end system. It stored it with my DNA matches. It assigned it to each one of them individually. So it had to write that and, and save it. It did it quick. Uh, there's no question it did it quick, but every one of those is a transaction. Every one of those is bandwidth. And it's small, it's thin, but it takes time. And then when I came back, I refreshed, made another call. If you do an assign all, it's one call to the back end. It assigns it all at one time, and then I come back with the refresh page. So it'll actually save them transactions, save me time, makes everybody get to the information, which is the discovery uh, of the data, faster. And so not a lot of difficulty in making a script to do that, but the end value of it is we'd be able to cluster maybe three, four, five times a day. That would be incredible. Now, that sounds like, oh man, look at the taxing load. Well, if I did it five times and I got, it's gonna make me discover information five times faster. So could please consider doing that. All right, so now we're back to the second cousin level and see all these in yellow and we're looking for the very next one in the list that's not been assigned a color, which is this one. Now we're not gonna click add to group here. We're gonna actually click on the name. That's real important. Each time click on the name and then you click add to group up here. So we're gonna click add to group right here, create custom group. We don't remember which number it is. Well, right there, it says group name two of 24. So we're gonna put in two and group, all right? And we're gonna save that. It auto assigns the next color in the list. So now click out here twice. Again, don't know why it's twice, it just is. All right, we're gonna to go to shared matches. And again, we're casting a net to 50 Cinemorgans on this one. So we're gonna scroll down till we get to 50 Cinemorgans. 
all right 53 49 right here so now we work our way up and again remember the reason we work our way up that's right because it's twice as fast and so we're gonna <laughs> click on these add it up and now you notice that because we numbered it one and two the one that i want is always on the bottom so it's easy to find okay now you could number you know z or z back through a and that way you know the one you just put in would always be on the top and that would make the shortest mouse distance if you're really looking in to polish the speed uh, before we end up having to go to that thing uh, that level though i would hope ancestry would simply give us the assign all hint hint all right so we're working up through the list <laughs> And, and uh, you know, while we're at it, there's a, you know, another button I'd like on this page, but I don't know if I'm going to ever get it. That's the download button. It sure would be nice. And the reason it would be nice is, you know, for those that, you know, are using the leads method, uh, all the other sites allow you to download it. You'd be able to download this into Excel and then combine it with the other sheets, uh, merge, write some macros over the names and get some master groups. Uh, do some master clustering, etc. But, you know, I think that's probably a ways away. For whatever reason, if they were going to do it, I think they would have done it by now. But it's something that I and pretty much everybody still wants. All right, so now we've assigned group two. So we're going to go back to the main page. And again, it's not here. We hit F5 to refresh. And it now brings it in from the back end system, which we wrote it to. Now, Notice that right here, we're going through all of these have colors, all these colors. This one doesn't. It says mother's side. We come here, all these have colors, mother's side, mother's side, mother's side, color, mother's side, mother's side, color, color, color. Notice something here. Everybody's got colors unless they're my mother's side. That means we've done my father's side. Now, this wasn't an accident. You know, I've clustered mine literally more than dozens of times <laughs> so i knew which two to select but you know for the purpose of making this video shorter i wanted you to get to the information quickest but the way you do it is exactly the same you simply scroll down you find the one that's not colored so if you don't have a mother or father test this wouldn't have a name and that's the only other one in the second cousin level that doesn't have a name and i would simply click on her name and I would add to a group and I'd create group three. Okay. And I'd continue to make group four, group five until I exhausted all the colors and I had color coded everybody in my DNA match list over 50. But you notice this, look at all these mother side, got a color, mother side, got a color, mother side, got colors. We're already down to 69 right here. Mother side, got color 64. Okay. Here's one at 59. That's the only person on my father's side that doesn't have a color inside that net. One person. That is incredible. Now, I don't know whether I skipped over them when I was moving up or what the deal was. Uh, we'll look at that uh, later. But, you know, in this, I was able to identify two lines on my father's side. Woohoo! All right, we're going to confirm our tree. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to start with my incorrect tree. That's what makes this video different than the other video. We're going to come right here and we're going to say, all right, we got Basies and Lewis, Siler and Collins. We're going to overlay this tree with my DNA matches because I'm going to prove my tree. All right. So we got DNA matches. Look at this. We got, you know, two colors here, one color here, two colors here. So what I'm going to do this is the time I'm going to bring in this. Now, this graphic was created uh, from somebody in the Facebook group uh, by Marcel Hebert. And I hope I got that right, Marcel. <laughs> and uh, he actually put it in the Facebook uh, group without the colors. And I said, hey, because it made me think of a new way to do this. So will you put these dots on there? And so he did. And the irony of this story is Shortly after producing this graphic and putting the color codes on here, he actually used the ball and pattern and the plus one videos and looked at this with his clustering and solved a problem that he had had for four years. Four years 
it didn't make sense until he used his own graphic with the color coding for the clusters, because I told him I, I, I overlaid the clusters, and then he laid that ball and pattern and then remembered the whole idea of a single connection and a plus one connection. It led him to the exact connection he needed to research. He looked specifically for that connection and found the solution. So congratulations, Marcel, and thank you, Marcel, uh, for the wonderful graphic that we're using here today. So what we've got at this point, let's go, to go back to our DNA match list. We've got uh, all these people clustered except for my mother's side, and we've got two colors. We've got yellow and kind of an orangey-brown. So we, we call the orangey-brown right here brown and the yellow. And we know it's not my mother's side, so we're going to call this my mother's side, the one that has pink and stuff on it. We're going to call that side my mother's. This will be my father's because we know that those are all on my father's side. And we've got two colors. All right, so that means that yellow is going to be everybody's ancestor here and, of course, everybody's descendant here. So this 3400 right here would be the combination. If you watch that other video, this color of brown, this color of yellow. So this 3400 is actually yellow and brown. This 3400 is pink and blue, okay? And then I would be yellow, brown, pink, and blue, all right? My 6800 is made up. And you remember, you watch that video, all these lines add up to 6800, 6800, 6800, 6800. All right, now that's real important because remember, what we're trying to do is we're overlaying our tree right here. So let's take our DNA matches and let's overlay the tree. Now, the first person that popped into the match list, because not all these people here, many, if well, not just many, most of these people uh, are people that I bought tests for and helped me solve my DNA mystery, okay? So in doing that, the first one that didn't was this one, <clears throat> and it popped in 840 centimorgans. Now, there's an important note here. There's one color. All right, so where on this tree would 840 be uh, with one color. So we have 68, 34, 17, come down, what's half of 17? 850. So that 840 is the 850 node right here. Well, now that means that that person is a half sibling to my father. Well, that means that that person, that female, is a half-sister to Dwight. Well, Otha and Margaret, they had three sons, Larry, Dwayne, and Dwight. I was named after the two brothers, so you can tell the names, Larry, Dwayne, and Dwight, right here. That's the three brothers. Okay, well, let's look at the next one. Here's one that came in later. This one has two colors. All right, 1,600. So where does 1600 with two colors fall? 68, 34, 17, 850 with one color, plus one, that's the two colors. So I'd have 850 under brown, I'd have 850 under yellow. So that's gonna be right here for the 1700 node with two colors. And that's what this person is, all right? So what that means is that person is a full sibling. So that'd mean that this person being either yellow or brown and this person being either yellow or brown can mine to make this you know, combination yellow-brown for my father and also made this yellow-brown here. So that meant that this person had to be a basie that I didn't know about. But now, thinking about this logically, what are the odds that Otha and Margaret had a daughter together and then gave her up for adoption and then had three brothers. And then I was the only grandson? That didn't make sense. So, hmm, something's not right here. So, you know, at first, because I told you my mother had not yet taken a test, I asked my mother to if she'd take a test because I, I suspected they were descendants from this person because that would make them, you know, down here with my mom, all right, and this person dropped kids in Kentucky, in Oklahoma, and in California from the years of 1917 all the way through the mid to late 1950s, okay? Um, don't want to call anybody a name, but everybody's got that person in the family that uh, didn't care about family and dropped kids all across the, 
the place. There's one in probably every family story somewhere. Uh, this was one here, and I was pretty sure the kinship was through this person. Now, that being said, I asked mom to test. So mom took the test, she spit in a tube, and it came back and it flagged everybody that matched her with mother's side. But then notice these two weren't mother's side, they were father's side. So it confirmed it was on this side. So there was no way, well, maybe there was a way. Maybe when they were young, they had hardships, and you know, maybe one of them had a baby prior and then together and they couldn't you know they went through the wars who knows i don't know their story and i'm a firm believer you got to prove it or it ain't so okay i've got a birth certificate for basie i got another birth certificate that says jones neither one of them are my biological i'm actually going to be another name we'll find out later uh and if you know my channel it's brown okay so you got basie you got jones you got brown i got two birth certificates you got to prove it to me. I am not going to take your word for it. I don't care if you got a birth certificate. I don't care if you have an obituary. I don't care if you have a video of them bringing you home, a marriage license. You know, like I said, I got an obituary of him naming me the son. All that proof. I could get into any genealogical society, and I have through these other people that are wrong, but the paper trail is perfect. But unless you can prove it with DNA, this don't mean squat. All right. Even though it looks like it's DNA verified, we'll talk about that later. But, uh, you know, because I had connections to cousins that met through my tree and through loans would still show them. And I showed that in a prior video and uh, it's in channel if you want to see it, where it showed that, you know, on some of these like John Amos Bennett, I had 29 connected uh, cousins through that. I'll give you a hint. That's not connected either. So. Uh, how do we go about doing this? Well, I told you that, you know, uh, I was named after the brothers Larry and Dwayne. My father had died in 2002, but Larry was still alive. And I asked Larry to take a test. So he spit in a tube and he sent it off. Now, Larry was my father's full brother. So let's see what centimorgans he should come up. Okay, 68, 34, 17, 850 through 1, plus 1 more, 850 through yellow, would be 1700. He should be 1700 with two color codes right here. That's what we should expect for Larry. All right. And I should be on his at 1700. Well, I'm not there at 1700 in his list. I'm not there at 850 in his list. I'm not there at 425 in his list or even at 212 in his list. I'm not in his list. And he's not in mine. It was at that moment I realized that my entire life and the last 30 years of genealogical research were a lie. Now, to say it's a gut punch is kind of making light of it. It's actually more of a soul punch. And so as you do this, I'm going to warn you right now, if you cluster your, you know, your matches and you do this, you're probably going to find a DNA surprise at either the parent or grandparent level and almost guaranteed from the great grandparent down. It's over 50% of the people that I've dealt with met and people that have taken polls in the Facebook group, you know, it's over 50%. It's closer to 55, 60% in the Facebook group, but have a DNA surprise at either the parent, grandparent, or both. So, big caveat here you know when you do this and you cluster and you overlay it like this you're going to find things out and it's going to devastate you emotionally and, and perhaps physically and then the people you contact trying to figure things out perhaps them as well uh, i've got a second cousin who i helped found that one of six brothers all of whom were married at the time of her conception that one of them is indeed her biological father. She can't go and ask them. She can't contact the family. It would literally destroy that marriage. And not only would it do that, but if any of the others were shaky, it would devastate it too. So mindful of that, she knows who her grandparents are and she knows her genealogy beyond that. She simply doesn't know which one of the six brothers are her father. And she may well never know unless one of those descendants someday in the future take a DNA test and unbeknownst to them, unlock the key. 
That's the only way she'll ever find out. Well, in my case, I was able to find out simply by having the brother take the test. So now what I've got is I've got these people <laughs> that I know are on my father's side because my mother's taking a DNA test and they don't match my mother. And I know that they're full sibling to who my father is. So with that, with a contact here, I can find out who their parent was, both their parents, and then contact this person or ask them if they know them and who the one parent was. And I know. Now, in the case of this story, uh, I did make contact with them. And when I was trying to figure it all out, uh, I had to do it the old way because there wasn't clustering and I couldn't just say, hey, it's your two parents, you know, and it's here. I didn't know that for six months. Ancestry didn't come out with the clustering until approximately four months after I'd figured it out. But now that we have clustering, it's so much easier because we can take the cinnamorgans, take the colors, overlay it to a tree, take the ball and pattern and the plus one video, and we can get right down to where we need to be looking. It may not be perfect. It may be off one degree or you know one generational distance one way or the other, but you're going to be able to know exactly where to look to find your answers. All right. So in doing this, what I had to do is I had to look at each one of these trees and build the trees. And so what I did is I had Family Tree Maker. I took every one of these people's trees, which at the time was four significant trees, and I started building them out until I had four trees, and then I was finally able to make them intersect. Okay? And when I got them to intersect, I got to a new tree. All right? So the new tree was, and I'll put it right here, a 2019 tree. Now, I had the tree worked out to here, now, the thing was, I didn't have this information. The reason I didn't have this information, and I couldn't figure out which one it was, and it took me another two months, because, again, even if I had color coding, it would have probably challenged me. William Brown and Caroline Clark had many children. Okay, and I'll just click on this, and we'll look at the profile uh, in a new Windows. All right. They had many children. But with the sons, one, two, three, four, five, six sons, three of these sons married three daughters from another family. Those sons from William and Caroline, three of them married three daughters from James Larkin and Sarah Adeline. So let's look at this one real quick. They also had several children. Okay. They had one, two, three, four daughters. And these three daughters, all three of them, married three of the brothers here. Now, I contacted the people who make the machines that FTDNA and Ancestry and MyHeritage and 23andMe, all of them use. Contacted the company that sells the genome sequencer and really did some strong investigation to how it was and what I could and should expect as I was learning about Cinemorgans, <laughs> trying to figure out my family. And with that, uh, I was still stumped because now I had all these descendants. They all rolled up into these people. I knew it wasn't the brothers or sisters that rolled up into the others that came under them. I knew it had to be one of the three pairs of Browns that married one of the three McFarland daughters, but I didn't know which one. And so I was kind of, you know, taken aback for, like I said, about two months. And then I decided, let's put it to paper. Let's just see. And what I found out was, is that even though it was the same four grandparents, my family pair, okay, had a stronger DNA match with their descendants than the other two sisters and other two brothers had for their descendants. I was able to identify which one was mine because all of the Cinemorgans, despite the anomaly of the three brothers marrying the three sisters, they all fell within normal ranges for their kinship. And even though the others were further away and had the same four, they fell in the normal ranges. So if you don't know about the website DNA Painter and the shared Cinemorgan tool, I strongly recommend it. All right. So 
With that, I knew who my grandparents were. I knew now. I finally felt an identity. I don't know who my father was, but I know my grandfather was Clarence Brown, and I know my grandfather or grandmother was Dolly McFarlane. Of that, I was sure. Okay? So, with that, let's look at Clarence's. And so, we're going to open his up. And with that, what did he have? Well, Clarence had Paul, Ernest, Eugene, and Larkin. So, there were four brothers... But Eugene died before I was conceived, significantly before, all right? So not Eugene. So that left three possibilities, Paul, Ernest, and Larkin. Now, on the surface, you could start formulating some preponderances of likelihood. I immediately picked out who I thought it most likely was, okay? I immediately thought it was probably going to be Larkin. The reason was my mother was born in 1943 and Larkin in 1935. That's eight years difference. Okay, my mother was 19, all right? And so, or, yeah, 19, just turned, I mean, literally just turned 19. And he, being eight, really seven because of the way the, the months of the birthdays, he's seven years difference. He's at 26. So this... 18-year-old just turning 19 with a 26-year-old seemed to me much more likely than her being with somebody that was 41 or 42 years old. I have a young daughter. She just started attending college. And I can tell you her words would be, ooh. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> as funny as that may be, the reality was my mother being at the same age, would likely be in the same mindset. So this wouldn't be that unusual. This would be very unusual, especially for my mother, who, you know, the way she was raised, I'm not going to say in a snobby part of town, but yeah. <laughs> so I just didn't, it was possible, you know, because, you know, teenagers, maybe there was a rebellious streak, something happened, you know, and I'll show you a moment. I don't know, but that was my first gut thought. But I needed proof. There was no proof to be had. And so I did find out that Larkin actually had a daughter, Rebecca. Rebecca is my sister. And Rebecca had a daughter. And... Let's see if I've got her in the tree here. It's Morgana. Now, in the tree, in the DNA match list, this is Morgana. And I tried to contact Morgana. I first, you know, left a phone call uh, at, you know, place I got a number uh, from where she worked. Left a, you know, message that, hey, you know, if you get a chance, you know, would you call? And no call. And then about a month later, I called and left another message. And about a month later, I called and left a message, and there was nothing. So I sent an email, and a few weeks later, I sent another email, and I got nothing. And I turned to my wife, and I said, I'm never going to find out. I'm, I, I'm just not going to find out who my biological father was. And there was an emptiness. Even though I knew my family, my grandparents, and knew the tree, and I was going to be able to get by with that, what people don't understand, when somebody has a DNA surprise at the parent level, you seek that answer like a drowning person seeks oxygen. It becomes a craving, a need, and uh, it eats at you until you find the answer. You don't need to meet them, but you have to have a name. And I can't describe it. Anybody that's had a DNA surprise can you know relate to that, but... That's just the way it is. Well, she took a test. Now, let's go through the scenario. First, let's look at her tree. She has an unlinked tree. And in this tree, it shows Larkin Brown as her grandfather, Rebecca as her mother, and there's her. So the question is, how would this translate? What Cinemorgan should I expect if Larkin is indeed my father, and then what Cinnamorgan would I expect if Larkin was my uncle and one of the other two brothers 
was my father. So if he wasn't my father, at least I was going to get closer. I, I knew it was going to be either Eugene or Paul. But the question is, is it Larkin? Is it Eugene? Is it Paul? We're going to find out. So if indeed Larkin would be my father, he would be here at 3,400. And that means Rebecca would be here at 1,700, which means Morgana would fall at 850. Because there's only one connection, okay? Now, she'd have both of these colors, but it'd be one connection down. Only through Larkin, not through my mom. If, however, Eugene or Paul was my father here, Larkin would be over here. They would share, still share, share both of the same parents. So it'd be 68, 34, 17, 850, because remember our thing about plus one, so it's 850 going through that one path. And then going through the other path, we do plus one, 850. So it's 850 from brown, 850 from yellow, 1700. So this is 1700 right here. So 68, 34, Larkin would be 17, Rebecca would be 850, Morgana would be 425. So if Larkin is my uncle, Morgana would be 425-ish. It could be 350, it could be 500, something like that. If, however, you know, Larkin was my father, then I would expect her to show up somewhere between 700 and 900, most likely 750, 875, right in that area. So, what does she show up? Well, let's go back to our DNA match list. All right. So, we come up to our DNA match. She has 753 centimorgans. So it was this person matching and knowing her tree, along with me having built out the tree and gotten all of Clarence's children, you know, the three possible brothers and a descendant of one of those. Now, if Morgana hadn't tested, I would never have known who my father was. And for that, I will be, for the rest of my life, grateful to what she's done because if it had not been for her testing, I would not have found out which one of the three brothers. Just like, you know, my second cousin who doesn't know which one of the six brothers are her father and probably will never know. She still fills that hole. Because I remember the hole when I got it down to where it's one of the three. It was better because I had the grandparents and she's better knowing it. Okay. But she's not going to know which one it is. So now I know that Larkin Brown is indeed my father. So how does this translate for our match list? All right, we've got the matches here. We've got Clarence Brown, Dolly McFarlane, all these people. So let's go back to our color coding or clustering on my father's side, because we know there's only two colors. So we know we've identified the line. Yellow is going to be one side, brown is going to be the other side. We don't know which one's which. You know, it's going to represent just like this. It's going to be brown and yellow. All right. So when we look, we have no tree here. We have no tree here. So that's no help. Well, these are double. And by seeing that, I know it's brown and McFarland, brown and McFarland. That doesn't help me. I need to find somebody who's singularly. So let's go back and just start with where we started. It's got a singular yellow dot. Okay. MR. All right. Right here. Because we knew who it was, we attached our DNA, through lines found it. So this isn't cheating at this point. It tells us we have a common ancestor of Dolly McFarlane. Well, see here, Dolly McFarlane. What about Clarence? Because right here, I've got Clarence and Dolly, right? Well, Dolly and William Spence. Well, is my tree wrong? Well, no. So let's go back and look at Dolly. So let's look at Dolly's profile here. And Dolly was married to Clarence Brown but also to William Spence. I've got that in my information, and indeed, that's what's going to match their information. I, my ancestor was Clarence and Dolly. Their ancestor was Dolly and Marion. Okay? So this tells me that the yellow dot, because they only matched me through one of these two, Clarence and Dolly. They only matched me through one of them. It's McFarland, because we know... Dolly Mae McFarlane. I have Dolly Mae McFarlane. I only have one dot. So that's the McFarlane line. So I can come over here to my add edit groups. I'm going to click on the pencil now. 
I'm going to highlight it and delete it, and I'm going to type in McFarland. So now I have identified that everybody with yellow is now a McFarland. Look at all this. We got all these people in yellow, and we know that's McFarland. So what's that brown color? <laughs> that's right. It's brown. So I, I didn't do that on purpose. It just turned out that way. I just did the autofill. All right, so group two, come here, highlight, delete, brown. So I've now been able to take the surnames, everybody on my paternal side, and identify how they connect to me. But where do they connect? All right. So here's 174 centimorgans. We've got a common ancestor. I have an idea where it's going to be. We know it's going to connect through the Browns. Maybe the Browns and McFarlands and that MR just wasn't close enough. 174 centimorgans. That's probably around the 212 mark. So 68, 34, 17, 850, 425, 212. Or it could be here, you know, 850, 425, 212. All right. So probably uh, up three for me or up three for them. So let's see what we got. So this is William Alexander Brown. So for them, it's up one, two, three, four for them. And for me, William Brown is up one, two, three for me. All right, which is what we expected. And we've got a William Brown and a Caroline Clark. Notice there's not uh, McFarlane in there. And we got William Brown and Caroline Clark. And we've got the brown color. Okay, so we've got the confirmation, we've got the tree, we've got the cluster. And so now what we would do is we would go over our DNA uh, matches here, all of them on the father's side. And we can tell now how they match. Now, because we did the match with one person on the McFarland side, okay, because of the way it connected, remember I said at the second cousin once removed or the third cousin level because mine when i clicked on here it was me and mr and it was you know right here one two three up so this would be the first cousin second cousin level so anybody that matches up here and you know for me the browns up here at the uh, james larkin sarah adeline layer is the William Brown. Anybody that matches through William Clark and Caroline Clark that might have been through this person might not show up because they're beyond that second cousin level. They might show up zero to her. Okay. So these McFarlands might show up zero to her. James and Sarah. Okay. The people I connect to through James and Sarah might be zero to her. So, and I'm going to give you an example of this because there are some real world examples and it may throw you off when you're looking. And that's why it's really important to look at that, you know, that ball and pattern that we're talking about. Um, this one right here shows a common ancestor because it shows a common ancestor. I can show it to you. Uh, we can't see the tree, but we can build up here. William Brown, Caroline Clark. Okay, so I connected them to the Browns because the other Brown person that we connected only connected them, you know, through the one Brown. They didn't show it on this other side because they didn't weren't related. So we were able to identify the number. But they're also related to the McFarland. But they don't have yellow because this person is one, two, three, four up. So first cousin, second cousin, third cousin, and the other person would be third cousin. So at the third cousin level, this person, Gay Lynn, and MR, even though they're both related to McFarland, MR and Gay Lynn are not DNA matches. They're so far apart at third cousins that they're actually zero. So once you get beyond second cousin, it can make it show up zero. Now, it wouldn't be in my list, or like MR is not in Gay Lynn's list. And Galen is not in MR's list. So when I cluster them, if I'm clustering all of them up into this area, I'm getting all of those segments. 
to identify this group for sure and this group in some instances because that's the second cousin level you know first cousin level second cousin level so everybody on the second cousin level i'm getting in here but depending on if somebody's a generation lower than me they might not show right here they may not connect to here with each other they connect with me but not with each other all right but it doesn't matter because we can define the lines and we can figure that out by doing some research in the trees. So just because that person didn't show a McFarland doesn't mean they're not McFarland. What it means is everybody I've identified with yellow as a McFarland is definitely a McFarland. Everybody I've identified as a brown is definitely a brown. And these others I've identified as a brown may also be a McFarland. It's just that the person that I was doing shared matches with didn't connect with them at that intersection okay all right well there it is and uh, first i want to say thank you to again to marcel Hebert for providing this and congratulations marcel for your discovery um hopefully you know the color coding here made sense uh, if it did, uh, please consider, you know, up here at the top, there's the QR code. What that QR code is allows you to uh, either subscribe to the channel for ongoing support or to make a singular donation. If a video in channel helps you, uh, please consider donating, you know, uh, so I can buy uh, Dr. Pepper's or coffee, get enough caffeine to stay up through the night <laughs> and make these videos for you. Um, your support really means a lot it also helps me keep uh, some decent computer equipment and uh, subscriptions to the different services so i can keep bringing you videos um that being said uh i just want to say you know thanks again to all of you who have already done it and there is a link you know if the qr code didn't work there's a link in the description you can use it now on the clustering uh let's just talk real quick uh oh, this is to talk about the qr code um I did make a very short guide. It's 12 pages. Most of it is either dead space or pictures, but you know, probably half of it is words. And I wanted to figure out a way to get it to you because you know, this video, like the clustering video is a year ago, this video is going to age and you know, people will see this video and want to see how to do this step by step. Some people just work better seeing it and reading it than listening to somebody talk about it because I'm flipping around, clicking on buttons. If you're one of those people, I did make it available on Ancestry. Now, caveat, this is only 12 pages long, and it does say $2.99. I wanted it to be free, or at the most, $0.99, cents, just something to cover whatever Amazon would charge me to, to do this. And the cheapest they would let me do it is $2.99. So it's $2.99. If you email me, if you are somebody watching this video now or a year from now, if you go to the channel page, there's the about, email contact is in there. If you email me and ask me for this, I will send it to you. It is free from me. If, uh, however, you can't get a hold of me and you want it, it will be here if you want to do it. I make very little on this. I'm not trying to make you any money on this. This is simply a guide to help you again. It's 12 pages long, and its entire purpose uh, of being here is so that it's available to you. You can get it on your Kindle or whatever, put it to the side. It does have like a, an eight-step process for clustering that details each step and, you know, pretty thoroughly. And then the ninth one tells you to repeat steps one through eight until you use up uh, all the colors or you've got everybody color-coded. So again... I apologize for the $2.99 value on that. And I, you know, if you email me, I will, you know, send that to you uh, as best I can. Now, if I get 50,000 requests for it, obviously I'm not going to be able to handle that. <laughs> My Google account doesn't, maybe you'll have to subscribe or something so that I can pay for more Google storage for my email if that happens so I can store my outgoing. But anyway, that's available. Additionally, uh, for those of you with a Fire Stick or you know Fire Cube or Fire TV, you can actually download our channel, just like you download you know CBS or ESPN or you know one of the uh, Hulu, Netflix or whatever, uh, DNA Family Trees, and that will give you these exact same videos but commercial free. That's right, commercial free. 
You watch them all. You can put them on your TV. You can watch them while you're working on the computer. You know, pause the TV, check something out, you know, continue on, back it up, whatever, while you're doing it on the computer. So eventually, it, once I hopefully have enough support, there's a QR code, hint, hint, uh, we will pay and we'll get this over to Roku as well and to Apple TV so that you can watch on any of the TV platforms and be able to see it entirely commercial free. My goal is not to have the, the commercials in there. My goal is to provide you this information. Um, I do have to recoup a little bit in order, like I said, to offset you know, not pay for, but offset the subscription cost and then, you know, kind of offset some of the other costs associated with the videos. Uh, video files are large, storing them, et cetera, et cetera. So with all of that, you know, this is available for you currently only on Fire TV. It doesn't work on your phone, doesn't work on an Android phone. Uh, it does not work on the on the Kindle. This is a TV channel and it's only for the Fire Stick, the Fire Cube or the Fire TV. Okay, from Amazon. Not yet. It does not work on Roku or anything else. So there are a couple of people you see. It's a four. Uh, two people marked it a one because it didn't work on their phones. You're right. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. It does not work on your phones of any type. It wasn't made for that. It was made strictly for that television streaming platform. It's a streaming you know, channel. All right. So thank you again, Marcel A. Bear, uh, because you know this chart, I'm, I know it helped you. I know it's going to help other people. And I hope uh, you enjoyed the clustering video. If you did, uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, click the bell notification. Uh, if you don't, who knows how long uh, all this stuff in the world is going to go on, right? See, you can offset it just by donating. No, I wish it was like that. But anyway, <laughs> please consider donating. Uh, like I said, to at least offset the coffee and Dr. Pepper cost of the videos. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, don't forget to, like I said, subscribe, click the bell notification. It's really important. If you don't click that, you won't know when the next video comes out. And, uh, oh yeah, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if not, tell me why. Hey, uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I would really like to know if you find out something using this. Like I said, I, and last time I did, I get some. I got a lot of comments saying, "Hey, I did this, and I was able to find something out." If you got, you know, a DNA surprise, and this helps you through it, I'd like to know. If uh, you're doing this and you break through a brick wall, I'd like to know. And, you know, it like Marcel I had a four-year-old brick wall, and he was able to get through it using this. So, if this helps you, let me know. And consider, you know, supporting us so that we can help you and, and other people in the future. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And we'll talk to you again very soon.